I was in a meeting uh, yesterday. Paul Lewis was there. He did an amazing mixed metaphor. Something like, you know, um, you know, we don't want to rock the boat till it's in the bag. And it's like, don't put boats in bags. <laughs> like, I, I got... <laughs> So, so the topic I'm putting on the conveyor belt <laughs> is corp, corp, corp. Um, <laughs> this is this Swedish is, chef. No. Corp, 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 corp. <laughs> this is cross-origin read blocking. I know I said pause, like, so I always want to say resource, but it's read. I've got, got it. Did it there. used to be resource blocking, and it renamed to read blocking? Uh, I don't know. Oh no, is it co co the cause is. Cross-origin cross -origin resource. resource sharing. <laughs> I, what is the S in course? Let's say cross sharing. <laughs> uh, security? No, it's not security. It's sharing. Let's say sharing. It's sharing. Now, this is a new behavior in the fetch spec uh, that was sort of added by some Chrome folks. And it's all to do, it's kind of to do with Meltdown Spectre. Oh, is that stuff. where we had the cool headline that because of Meltdown Inspector, Chrome uses more RAM now? Oh, yeah. Well, that's it's not to do with this exactly, but yes, that has been a, cool. a problem with it. Well, let's, so the, the more memory thing, has, that's more down to site isolation. Oh, I thought it was part of site isolation. Interesting. See, so I learned something. It's, it's, a, it, it's sort of to do with it. So in case the users don't know, I wrote an article on site isolation. I will link to it in the description. Oh, did you? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, might have just I, th been I think I had three to. weeks of security reviews on it because oh. it was. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, back in the, yes, of course you did. Back I in the remember. day when it was announced. <laughs> back in the when it was right. Yes. So we'll add that in. Yes, and site isolation is like Chrome has been putting tabs in different processes yeah. since version one. Mm -hmm. We were the first to do that, I think. But we didn't do it with iframes. Yeah. And we didn't do it, in some cases, we didn't do it with new windows. Like if you had, um, sometimes if you were clicking, uh, if it was window.open, mm -hmm. I don't think we put that in a, a well, that has the opener uh, yeah, we thing. Had so uh, yeah, there were some cases where we weren't putting these things in other processes. Meltdown Spectre came along and went, we've got this problem. Th this, this is an entry point for us. Yes, where memory that's in the same process can free you know, fall. You can just read it if you do it right. Yes, through, through, through a lot of trickery and a lot I of I should probably be more careful about what I say about Meltdown Spectre, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we need to get Spreading this Spreading more reviewed. fear, uncertainty, and doubt about this is probably not the best idea. It's a very tricky hack, but it's something yep. that, that we need to be careful of. Um, so we thought, well, oh, this, this thing where we are putting things in different tabs, uh, different processes, really good idea, but we just need to finish that work. Yeah. And so we did that, and that was like uh, UPIFs, which was uh, out of process iframes. Oh, the UPIFs. UPIFs. Yes. And so that was all part of site isolation. Same with Windows. And, and we've done that work, and we've shipped it. Yeah. More processes means more memory. Ta-da! But it means more security, and mm -hmm. that's more important. So that solves the problem of another origin's iframe sharing a process mm -hmm. with you and being able to get that, you know, potentially maybe getting out that data through yeah. Meltdown Spectre. But we have a lot of APIs on the web that let you read data from another origin mm -hmm. with the other origin's cookies mm -hmm. and have it do things on your page. Script tag includes. Script tag, images, images, uh, video, audio, mm -hmm. style, style sheets? sheets, style sheets. Correct. Um, yeah, lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, those are the main ones. And this is bypassing course, right? This yes. is just like do a request, put in. You can't read it in terms of like JavaScript, read it byte by byte, but it's just it's going to get incorporated into the page one way or the other. Exactly, exactly. And so the danger is if you have this image tag, we'll say, mm -hmm. pointing at Facebook.com, mm -hmm. it's going to load that data in, and it's going to have an image decode error. Mm -hmm. But that data does go into the process. It's in the memory. It's in the memory. Because it had to be there to get evaluated, and then the browser can determine. This is actually an image made. Yes. Yeah. And it's the same for, like, I mean, the fetch API lets you do no calls fetches. True. So that's another one. Mm -hmm. And then, same with script tags and everything. Even if it fails to load because it's the wrong type, yeah. it has still gone into that process. So that is what. Corp is all about. <laughs> the way it works is uh, if it's a no calls fetch mm -hmm. to another origin, uh, the data comes back. And um, what it does is it tries to determine ahead of time before it sends the data back to the API, like the image tag or whatever. Mm -hmm. It tries to determine, it's like, hang on a minute, does this seem like something that's 
you're not going to be able to use anyway? Does it seem like something that could potentially hold private data? OK. And those are, um, it looks at MIME types right now mm -hmm. uh, for okay. things like. MIME types deducted from the file extension or? De determined from the content type header. Oh, so response. basically, it sends out the fetch and gets the response out of process, does an analysis, and then decides whether the data goes into the tab exactly. process or not. And if it's uh, text HTML, mm -hmm. or if it is JSON, mm -hmm. or if it is XML, except for SVG, um, that's when it kind of goes, this looks dangerous. This looks dodgy. OK. Um, I'm just going to fail. And that case will never go back into the process. Right now, we're relying Even when I want to include an HTML file or something? You can't include an HTML file as an image. You can't include it as uh, oh, yeah. you know, scripts. Yeah. Like, these are all formats that are mm -hmm. definitely going to fail. True. OK, okay. Um, I'm with you. Right now, you need the, the header for um, strict MIME type checking mm -hmm. to do it. But we're going a step further, and we're, we're experimenting with actually, rather than relying on MIME types, to sniff the data. So, okay. so even if it serves as script, but it's quite clearly HTML or quite clearly uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's not an image. It's uh, it's something else. We can you know look at it and go. We make a judgment call. We don't actually want this data to end up in the process. I We're see. pretty confident this API is not going to be able to do anything with it anyway. Mm -hmm. And and that's 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 how it works. There's some weird edge cases like um, text plain is another one of the formats that we think well that could have user data in. Less likely, but possible. But lots of script tags load their scripts with text plain. Um, not anymore. They don't. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're, we're blocking that. Uh, no, we, it, it turned out not not that's not happening a lot. Interesting. For cross -origin. I thought that. Okay, sure. Cool. Um, but uh, it, yeah, it's not, not a cross origin anyway. But one API that does receive a lot of text plane. Can you guess which one receives a lot of text plane? Style sheet. It, it is video. Yeah, there is a load of video data out there that is served as text plane for no good reason. That is very and confusing. So there's had to be an exception for that. Like, if the response is a range response, mm -hmm. 206, then if it's text plane, fine, whatever. Oh, look, it's cross origin That's... video. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, we've talked about that before <laughs> as well. So, yeah, that's, that's Corb. You, you know, people shouldn't see any difference. I was about to say, like, it's, it's basically a no op for most people, unless Absolutely. you want to opt in with the MIME type checking yes. to so make it better? Yes, that, and that will protect your data more against yeah. uh, like Or your user's sites. data. Your, absolutely, your user's data. Um, and uh, you, you might see failures in cases where you maybe are relying on this text plane thing to be done. I script. mean, in, in the end, you want to make sure your content type headers are correct anyway. Yes, and we've made a judgment call that it's like it's there's so Percentage of break is low this. enough for us to take that damage. Yeah. And yeah. the benefit of yeah. a security upgrade from like Meltdown spec is, is worth it. So that's called Brilliant. Cut my and podcast it, it, into pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my life into pizzas. <laughs> this is my second course. <laughs> right.